We have one more presenter with us who is closely related to historical justice and the work of our International Commission. This is Mr. Marcos Zingeris, a long-standing chair of the Commission and coordinator of the subcommission. We, under his coordination, the most difficult tasks have been completed and uh, the most important conclusions on complex issues have been adopted. Marcus is also a writer and a journalist, an essayist as well. He is working at the, uh, he, as a director of the State Gaonas Museum. I admire Mark for his uh, ability to speak very, uh, in very simple words and terms about very complex issues. I truly believe that he will approach the subject of today in a similar way. He will speak today about uh, the difficulties of a reconciled uh, European memory. Thank you, Director, colleagues, distinguished guests, participants of the forum. A dozen of years ago, when I lived in Italy, I saw two farmers, a former communist partisan and a former fa fa fascist. They were farming near each other on the hills of Umbria, and they used to watch each other work through binoculars. They couldn't reconcile up until their death. In Italy, I also saw the municipal elections poster, which said, vote for this person. He is a poet, and he is a communist. I don't think that in Lithuania, this poster would have brought any advantage to the candidate. Are there any ways to reconcile memory for Europeans. Several decades ago, this were, statement would be unimaginable. This is not because uh, there were no international unions. There was an Iron Curtain, and uh, the identities of uh, Europeans were based on roots and not on branches, which are widely developing today. Globalization and global challenges are making us think about Euro at European memory, European values, and European identity. These things unite us better than Euro does. I think that uh, the continent should be, first of all, united by the memory because this is what unites political nations, whether we talk about their development or stability periods. What is reconciled memory all about? Is this all about culture and architecture? On the euro currency, we can see beauty and harmony. We cannot see the chaos, the war, the terror, the bombings. We can't see those on the European currency. This is understandable. Europe is all about uh, the project and the implementation of wishes, after all. But uh, its memory de is dependable on the ways we treat the European wounds and the incapacities that come back, date back to the 20th century. What I refer to is the separation of Europe into the East and the West. It's trivial, but I will remind you that uh, the 
common memory should raise new generations of Europeans, both in the East and West of Europe. Empathy, knowledge, subjective experience, and emotional intellect is of importance because they create the essence of identity. It's quite more difficult to manipulate citizens educated on the basis of these values. We cannot avoid in the politicization of history and art, neither in West or East Europe, because it's useful for politicians to take, make use of people's emotions for their agendas. However, moral values are of key importance. And this is why it's of key importance to hear the testimonies of witnesses of the European catastrophes, including the Holocaust, Stalinist terror, Yugoslavian ethnic cleansing, and uh, the bloody conflicts in Caucasus. The testimonies of the Holocaust witnesses are most important because uh, the Holocaust witnesses are the oldest uh, surviving witnesses of the genocide of Holocaust. Secondly, Holocaust relates to European uh, law enforcement. And thirdly, Holocaust denial brings forward anti-Semitism and racism. Memory cannot be reinforced uh, without objective knowledge, primary sources, and competitive methodology, as well as good dissemination of the knowledge. Lithuania, as well as other post-Soviet countries, is, it features several competing narratives which exist without any common denominator. The Litvak narrative and its European elements. In some towns, in 1941, a third or more of their inhabitants disappeared per overnight, and the remaining inhabitants did not tell about it to anyone. We can't speak about the Holocaust in Lithuania without painting the cultural and political wider context. What was the contribution of Jew Lithuanian Jews to the country's culture and urbanization? Well, the Litvak narrative and heritage demonstrates that Europe is a continent united by cultural bridges from east to west and from west to east. The Vilnius synagogues had religious and philosophical books printed in Amsterdam. On the other hand, in Western Europe, you could find books printed in Vilnius publishing houses. Recently, the library of Vilnius Gaonas Museum received a prayer book of Lithuanian Jews used in Switzerland. Lithuanian Jews share with the Western and Eastern Jewish communities the history of historical migrations the, that lasted up till 20th century, the Judaic religion, the languages Hebrew and Jewish, Yiddish language, my family member recently saw a bench in Elsass synagogue and a family grave in Strasbourg, which were in, bore the inscriptions of a maiden name of our grandmother. The Venus Jewish Museum hosts exhibitions of Lithuanian-born artists with global acclaim. The first such uh, exhibition was organized uh, of uh, a photographer, Ran Man Ray whose parents were Litvaks. Unfortunately, Europe shares the history of Nazi genocide. We share this history with the countries outside our continent, including the US and Israel. The Holocaust victims, Jews from, East, uh, from Europe, moved to Israel, and the figure is 300,000. This figure uh, comes from a re report which has recently been sent to the Stockholm ITF organization, International Holocaust Remembrance and Education Organization. The report quotes interviews that demonstrates that Holocaust defines and underpins the identity of modern Israelians. The Haaretz Daily notes that uh, memory of the Holocaust is um, of greater importance to Israelis as a part of their identity 
in comparison to Judaism, historical holidays and life in Israel. This means that exiles from Europe have retained the cornerstones of European memory. In the post-Soviet countries, archaic anti-Semitic stereotypes sometimes can be seen. They include the global plot of the Jews, the myth of Nazi Judaic Bolshevism and Soviet anti-Zionism. This is why in the post-Soviet countries it's very important to consistently disseminate objective knowledge about the Holocaust and use them for addressing the challenges to liberal democracy. I'm referring to the unimaginable brutality of the Holocaust, the nationalism of Nazi collaboration, collaborators and anti-Semitism. In the scale of collaboration, we have to analyze and disseminate the information on how the Stalinism and uh, later Soviet regime censured, pre persecuted, re and repressed the Jewish culture. In the Stalinist uh, empire, there was no explanations on the Hitler's doctrine and its racism. The fact that Nazi crimes were racist and that uh, this racism was uh, not explicitly demonstrated by the Soviet regime created problems for later in generations. Whenever competent historians, journalists, and writers wanted to demonstrate their approach to and reconstruct the Jewish narrative in the independence of Lithuania, what they had to do were, was to reconstruct the past from the remnants and fragments of the past so that they could uh, fight with the stereotypes which remained in our country, left by the genocidal Nazi regime, Stalinist and neo-Stalinist policy that was fatal to the continuity of the life of Lithuania's Jews. The Ever since uh, the start of the Gorbachev's Glasnost and Perestroika movement, starting with 1988 to 1993, 4,000 articles on the history of Jews were published in Lithuania. This demonstrates that uh, the history of Jews was repressed in Lithuania during the USSR regime. Why there is a differing approach to geopolitical realities in Western and Eastern Europe? Well, first of all, the communists in Eastern Europe are usually seen as the fourth, fifth pillar of the Moscow's expansionist policy. However, in the Western Europe, occupied by the Third Reich, Communism and communists were the key and best organized anti-Nazi structures tried as an anti-fascist power in the Spanish Civil War. The dogmatic Stalinist policy vis-à-vis -vis the European Socialists and Democrats before the Second World War and the union with uh, Hitler forces later divided the anti-fascist front in Europe. Secondly, when the West talks about the Second World War, the USSR is treated as a part of the anti-Nazi alliance. The key shift in the war, Second World War cannot be understood without the Stalingrad battle. This interpretation is still relevant. Recently, President of Israel, Simon Peres, jointly with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, launched the Tolerance Center and thanked the Russian nation for its role in fighting Nazism. However, in the post-Soviet countries, when we think about the Red Arm, the dark side of the role of the Red Army, that is the loss of the independence. When the U.S. and Western Europe did not uh, pay any attention to the Stalinist crimes, is clear. Anne Applebaum recently 
wrote a book on the Iron Curtain. She mentions that Western claims to Eastern European countries uh, became empty rhetoric. The West did, aren't, did not uh, engage in interventionist policy. In addition, the Western European post-war communists, with, ex with certain exceptions of Greece, Spain, and Portugal, worked in the context of liberal democracy and used the mechanisms of this liberal democracy. This is how Euro-communism was formed. The reformer communist Dubček, a representative of Euro-communism in the East, was arrested in 1968 by the disseminators of the Kremlin ideology who came to Prague on tanks. It's of importance that Holocaust is the greatest evil for the multicultural West due to many political problems because racism poses a fundamental threat to multiculturalism and Nazism is the most uh, fundamental part of race, racism. Germany is the greatest part, uh, country in Europe. It had special relations with the Holocaust, but I will not cover that because it's a separate topic. The attitude of Western Europeans to Holocaust was formed f during several decades. In the non-free Eastern European countries, which had survived the Holocaust, th there was no such possibility. The post-Soviet Lithuania had to engage with the national identity and ensure that it is preserved. These problems had been uh, already solved in the Western Europe. The recently uh, opened Lithuanian documents demonstrate that the Holocaust was used by Moscow as an uh, instrument of international policy. Its aim was to stop the discourse on the past between the exiles and Jews and to compromise the groups uh, of Lithuanians and Jews in emigration who could form anti-Soviet ad hoc alliance, alliances with the Jewish diaspora in the West. The Lithuanian KGB made a report to the Communist Central Committee in 1978 on the relations between the foreign Lithuanian community with the Zionist groups. This uh, document is still in the archives and it demonstrates the attitude of the Soviet Union to this issue. The uh, courts in Lithuania on the Holocaust had no educational impact on Lithuanian citizens because no Holocaust studies were carried out in Lithuania and public discussion was uh, impossible on this uh, subject. The official uh, attitude to that was uh, skeptical to be the most mild. Eichmann represented Eichmann's uh, court in Jerusalem and uh, courts of uh, Nazi criminals in Ulm and Lübeck and other places were virtually not known in Lithuania. What unites the Eastern and Western Europe are the actions of the writers of the nations. The writers of the nations were sought for. They helped the Jews in Europe, in Paris, Brussels, Warsaw, and Vilnius. I saw the commemoration of the writers in, among the nations in Belgium, but Lithuania, in, neither in the capital nor in the provinces, there are no memorials to the writers among the nations. Even though these people face huge threats in, in helping Jews. 
overall, I think Europeans have a lot to do to agree on uh, universal human values related with the experience of the last century. In view of the past, we have to agree, and agreement should be reached between the old and the new Europe on these issues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the most interesting presentation where we heard a number of highly important insights and I hope that we will come back to these insights later to discuss them 